Hello everyone and welcome to our first session this year of Numagic webinar series Model-Based Systems Engineering from Theory to Best Practices. Today's webinar will cover various approaches to work product generation from CSML models. The presenter will put a special emphasis on publishing information stored in the models on the web to various stakeholders, some of which have never been exposed to NBCE models or modeling tools. In this session, you will learn about technologies supported by the Cameo Systems Modeler to work product generation, uh, publishing of models on the web, reviewing published models on the web and tracking review progress, integrating published models with wikis, and finally customizations of appearance and information fidelity of published models. Uh, the session will be hosted by Dr. Andrus Armanos, OMG Certified UML Professional and Certified Scrum Product Owner. Andres is the product manager of Magic Draw and Cameo Collaborator. Uh, he is responsible for setting directions for products, forming the vision and roadmaps, and selecting capabilities for each new version of Magic Draw and Cameo Collaborator. He also works with major customers and ensures that the internal development team knows and understands the strategic directions and customer demands. If you have any questions during this presentation, uh, write them in the chat window. After the presentation, Andres will review the questions and answer some of them live here. Uh, other questions will be answered later and presented together with a video link of a recorded webinar. The presentation will approximately take 45 minutes and the questions answer ses session about 15. Um, so, welcome, Andres. I see he is ready to start. Thanks, Aiste, for, for the introduction. So, hello, everyone. I am Andres Armanas, Magic Draw Product Manager. And today we'll discuss uh, the topic on publishing and reviewing models on the web. So, uh, the following slide represents the agenda uh, of this. Uh, uh, what we'll go through today, so we'll start from the very simple brief introduction. Uh, so we'll discuss the problem being solved by MBSC related to document generation. And then we'll go and uh, discuss the entire stack or spectrum of technologies supported by Cameo Systems Modeler and MagicDraw for work product generation. So it, when talking about the technology supported, so we'll start from the most widely used currently technologies like template-based reports. Uh, then I'll briefly show you um, how work products can be directly get generated uh, from the models. And then we'll, we switch to the very innovative appro approaches. Uh, one is the SysML views and viewpoints based approach for document generation. And the second is the same approach for web content generation. So, if, if just briefly talk about uh, this one is we'll 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 touch uh, how do we put uh, content from the models on the web? How do we review published models? How do we track status uh, of of the reviews? How do we integrate uh, various work products uh, generated out of the models together? Uh, how do we customize appearance of uh, the information published uh, on the web? Uh, so, I'll touch all of these topics and also I will demonstrate how all of these uh, technologies work uh, in, in, in the product. Okay, so basically we'll start from the very basic um, problem statement, I would say. So basically the, the document or uh, based or traditional systems engineering um, it has the problem where it's very difficult to maintain the consistency in different set of documents which comprise the system specification. So basically when you are building a system, you are producing a lot of work products work, uh, which are actually stored in a different set of documents, Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint documents, and the information in there is not only related but also is duplicated because of the nature of 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 the, of the process uh, which is employed. Uh, moreover, 
all of these artifacts are typically stored in different repositories. So it's extremely difficult and time consuming uh, to, to maintain, uh, you know, consistency between these uh, different uh, uh, sources of information. And if change happens, so it's very difficult to tell which other documents have to be adjusted uh, or changed in order to, you know, to, to, for the system specification uh, to be up to date. So one of the biggest promises uh, of MBSC, model-based systems engineering, is as follows. So basically you can generate uh, documents uh, from the consistent model repository. So basically the primary work product for a systems engineer now becomes not a document but a model which you place into central model repository. And then when you need to generate documents, you can generate them consistently uh, and basically re regenerate them when it's needed. So basically from the model repository in the center, you can generate Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoints, um, web content, whatever you need. Uh, and all of that information is consistent because your model is consistent in, in the model repository. So that's a very basic introduction. But uh, what people are asking, they like that idea, but basically they are always asking, so how do we actually achieve that in, in actual products? What are the methods? What are the technologies supported and which we sh should choose? So what are the cons and what are the pros uh, for using one or other technology in, in, in our products? So this, this session is about that. I will cover, cover the entire spectrum of technologies we support and I will also show what are the pros and cons of each technology. And then you can also quite easily decide which one suits you better. Okay, so we'll start from the template-based reports. That's a technology that we, uh, well, we use, our, most of our users are using right now. It's uh, the, the oldest te technology we have, and we actually didn't invent it. Basically, we use Apache Velocity Engine. It's an open, uh, open source uh, project, a free one, and it's quite uh, heavily used in, in other products too, not just ours. Uh, basically, the, the Apache, Apache Velocity Engine provides uh, the velo support for the Velocity template language, VTL which is a scripting language used by the Velocity Engine for, for describing templates. So what, what, what's the process for creating such templates? Well, for example, if you need a Word document or Excel document, so then you create that Word document using Microsoft Word, for example, and you employ all the uh, Microsoft Word capabilities to design uh, how your document will look like, so you will you can you, you know define specify the layout of your document, the style, headers, footers, uh, static text, tables, whatever you need. And then what VTL adds to, the, to this, it allows you to put placeholders for Cameo Assistance Modeler and Magic Draw elements. So if we look at the following slide, it, it depicts how the, the the process works now. So let's let's imagine we have a model at the left hand side here. And we have a template, VTL template, which is actually a Word document where VTL script excerpts in it or a Excel document or even a text file or whatever document you like or PowerPoint uh, document, for example. So basically the Magic Draw report engine takes the model and the template and generates the corresponding work products out of these. So, so basically, if you have a Word template here, so Word document will be generated for you. If you have an Excel file here, an Excel file will be generated. The same holds for other types of documents. So if you have a, an HTML file here, so HTML document will be generated for you. So it's a very simple um, uh, approach, I would say. Uh, so out of the box, we support Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, HTML, OpenOffice documents, XML documents, uh, any any plain text uh, files. Uh, one more important feature related to uh, report generation is how do you automate that? Well, for example, most of the customers demand uh, you know automatic generation of report reports each night. So for this, they set up the following environment depicted in, in this slide. 
So first of all, typically you have to have Magento Teamwork server where you commit uh, changes uh, made to the models. Uh, so basically all of your models are stored in Teamwork server. And then you, you put, we typically have to set up a separate machine for generating reports. And then in, in that machine, you place Magic Draw, and each night you launch Magic Draw in headless mode. So basically, it's launched without any GUI from command line. And basically, it can be a Unix machine or it can be a Windows or Mac, Mac, Mac machine. Um, and basically, you, from in that machine, in, in, in the periods of time, uh, like for example, each night or every two hours or whatever you like, you set up that Magic Draw is launched in headless mode and the required reports are generated for you. I, and it doesn't matter if it's a Word, doc, Word documents or uh, HTML uh, portals. So after they are generated, the process of uploading to HTTP server can be automated. Some customers have this HTTP server deployed on the report generation machine. So in, in some cases, it, it's the same machine. So, so basically, this process can be automated. And after uh, the content is automatically uploaded into HTTP server or another server like FTP server or other other uh, 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 or network drive, for, for example. So that that content can be easily served to end users, for example, those who who access data uh, using web browsers. Uh, okay, so that's it for the first uh, technology. And now, now I would like to uh, do a demo of the. Uh, things uh, I, I was talking about. Uh, so we'll start from now. I, I will launch, launch Magic Draw, and I will start from the very basic um, capabilities. So we'll now uh, I will show you a very simple uh, VTL template, so you could understand what it what it looks like. So um, okay, so we have here a Word document. And let's say that the uh, user wants to, to, to print information on all blocks, systemal blocks in, in his model and provide that information to his colleagues or some stakeholders. And definitely these colleagues or, or stakeholders, for example, don't want to, you know, to install Magic Draw or, or they don't actually, um, uh, you know, they, they have never been exposed to models or SysML, so they want to have something uh, like you know, a familiar format of data. So in, th in this case, they want to have a Microsoft Word document with a simple table, which would list all blocks and their documentations, if there is some documentation uh, for, for that block. So for this, you create a Word document like this, and you create a simple table here, and you put a, VT a couple of VTL, st VTL statements here, where you say that, well, I am scanning all blocks in my model, and for each block, I am printing block name, and I am also printing uh, the description or the, the 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 documentation of that block in, in in the next cell here. So that's it. And now let's see how that works. Okay, I am now switching to Magic Draw, and uh, our report generation functionality is accessible via the tools and report wizard menu item. And I have previously added this report to the report wizard. That can be done via the new button here, so I will not show, show it right now. You can do it uh, on your own machines if you, if you try this functionality. So we have already uh, this report template in my report wizard. So if I want to, to, to print a, a list of blocks, I have to press next, next. Uh, I'll choose from the physical model, I'll choose the package uh, the, the entire physical model package, which contains my blocks. And we'll go next. Uh, here's the target uh, document into which the data will be generated. It's blocks report dot uh, doc x, and that's it. And yes, we can see the list of all blocks in the selected package. So if we look at the physical model on here, so we can see all of these blocks here. So if we have interface blocks like here, so they are not included into the report. We can, we can easily now print uh, the, just the, the block information. Um, 
if you if you need additional uh, adjustments to the template, uh, you can add it. For example, you need a title like um, structure, right? I can use styling. Uh, I can save it. Uh, I can regenerate my report. I will close it before doing that. Yep. We can double check if, if there are changes. Yes. And we can go next, 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 and we can generate the document. Yep. We can see that uh, the heading is here. So we can add static text. Uh, tables, we can also, uh, and, and, and in places, uh, in, in the document, we can add information from the model. Uh, we also have predefined set of templates for systems engineers, and I will uh, show you one of the most widely used. So this one is for requirements. So in this model, my model, we have a set of requirements under the user needs package. So uh, you can see these requirements right here, and they are also displayed in the requirements table. We can see this table right here. Uh, there are also uh, system requirements under my conceptual model package right here, and this under the system uh, requirements sub package. Uh, and these requirements are displayed in the requirements diagram here. So now. Again, if we have a problem that someone is not using models or they want a simpler representation of the information in, uh, in the models and want to be able to consume that information easily, so most likely they will want something like a traditional reports uh, for requirements or document, requirements document. So there is a template for that. So we'll go to the tools and then we'll select report wizard and then we'll choose uh, the uh, from the requirements group of templates, we'll choose the requirement report template. And again, let's, let's add now three packages. So they are already added for me because I did that previously. So uh, we'll add user needs, uh, system requirements, and use cases to this report. And that's it. So let's wait for a couple of seconds until the document is generated for us and it will be shortly presented for us. Okay, so now we have the document um, printed. So let's go to the actual, to the part where, where the model uh, element representations are, are shown. So, as you can see, it looks well, very similar to, to the traditional uh, requirements document. So, it has uh, heading, uh, headings, it has the information uh, requirement texts here. So, all of the information from the, my, from my requirements is, is presented in this, in this document. And actually, you don't have to be uh, uh, um, someone who is exposed to models or knows CML to, to be able to consume information in this um, uh, in, the, in this report. So what's interesting here is that traceability information is also presented here. So for example, we have uh, direct requirements from the fresh milk requirement, and we can navigate by clicking Control and click. We can navigate to the direct requirement. And we can also navigate back to the fresh milk if, if, if there is a need. So basically, all of that information, traceability information, is taken from the model. And basically, if something changes in the model, you just need to regenerate these specifications. And that's why they, they are consistent. If you generate 10 documents or 100 documents, whatever, so basically the information in there is consistent because you are taking all of that information in different aspects uh, from the single consistent model. Okay, so now another interesting capability I mentioned is the ability to directly generate work products from model. So basically, not always you have to deal with report templates adjust them for your needs. In many cases, all you need is, for example, just a table 
uh, Excel table to provide data to, to your colleagues so that, for example, they, 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 uh, they understand that information presented to them and maybe they give your input, for example, by filling in missing values in that Excel, uh, in Excel file. So I'll show you the uh, out-of-the-box functionality for, for doing that. So uh, if we take a look at the user needs uh, table, requirements table, so we can directly generate Excel file containing these requirements. So for this, I'm clicking on the export button here and I can, for example, uh, choose the file user needs to. I can also, by the way, choose not just to generate a, a Excel files, but also I can generate HTML files or CSV files directly from tables. So in this particular case, I will demonstrate the generation of Excel workbooks. Okay. And if we go to the file system, here is the file which was generated. We can see the user needs which are printed in, uh, in, in here, displayed in, 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 this, in this Excel. Um, so if I mentioned I will not demonstrate this capability here, but basically if the, some values are missing, for example, in your particular case, you don't have texts of some uh, requirements uh, and you want someone to adjust them or, for example, uh, your colleagues want to edit them or update descriptions here and there, it's possible then to take the same Excel file and uh, update your model according to that uh, to that Excel file automatically. Um, okay, so here's the ability uh, to directly generate uh, Excel files and uh, HTML reports or CSV files directly from from any table of Magellar. Uh, okay, the next. Uh, very interesting capability. Again, related, uh, it's implemented on top of uh, report wizard functionality is the ability to generate web reports. So we have several options there. So the first and very widely used one is the ability to, uh, well, to use the template which generates entire uh, information from the model onto the web. So for this, you typically choose the web publisher 2.0 template. Uh, all you can, all you do here is you just go through the same wizard and your model is generated onto the file system. So I have done that already. I have generated this uh, report for this specific model already uh, to save time. So we, uh, I will show how it looks like right now. So I am going to web reports 2.0 folder and we can have a look at how it looks like. So basically here, as I mentioned, you see the entire information from the model. So with the highest fidelity. So we can see the user needs here. Uh, we can see the information in the table. You can see each individual requirement with all of its properties. So you can see the name of requirement, the ID and the text. You can switch between different modes of properties. Like you can show export properties or all properties just like in Magic Draw. So the view here is very related to what you can see in Magic Draw. Uh, you can browse for the physical architecture. So what, uh, you can also navigate, for example, by clicking on this diagram, you can open the specification of, of this specific element. So all of this uh, template is, is based, uh, is written in VTL. It's open. So you can, if you need, for example, uh, different view, uh, not so many element types to see in, in, in this web report. So basically it's the way to, it's a, most of the easiest ways to, to customize and create your own web portals. So another option, uh, more I would say advanced one was introduced in Magic Draw and Camera Systems Modeler 18.0. So we call these web portal, portal portals. So that template can be uh, chosen from the for, for systems engineers it's it, it's available under the SysML web reports uh, package right here again I will not uh, go for all the steps right now uh, but because I already gener generated that web, web portal for me for demo purposes so we'll go here and here we go so in, in this web portal is 
uh, in op uh, as opposed to the previous one, doesn't show all the information from the model. So we designed it specifically to suit systems engineers' need, and we do, do not present all of the information available in the model. So basically what we were trying to achieve is that people who are not modelers, non-modelers, would be able to consume information from the models in here. So for example, if you go to the requirements uh, tree, you can see already filtered information just related to requirements. Um, as you can see, no, even the table, the requirements table is not shown here. To, to, to get access to this table and see that table, you need to, to click on the, on the package because we saw that non-modelers are actually more comfortable with this. They are not always comfortable with this concept of diagram at all. So uh, you can see the table here and as opposed to the previous uh, report, the table can be sorted easily, uh, columns can be shown or hidden, the navigation works from, from each cell. So basically it's a much more advanced way of generating information uh, for, for your stakeholders. Uh, if, if you go, there are other trees like structure for depicting your uh, logical models, your physical models, again as uh, the same as in previous portal, uh, the navigation works, so you can easily go to the, uh, for example, power owner block and you can see all of information on that power owner and as you can see it represents information uh, selectively. So basically it presents the main characteristics of that element, the value properties, parts. So basically this template is very much uh, designed and adapted for systems engineers. Um, yeah, we also have the interfaces tree, which shows our interfaces. Uh, the constraints tree, uh, we can have a look at what constraints do we have. Um, behaviors tree and the diagram tree, which shows all diagrams uh, and you can easily browse through these diagrams. There is also, we also um, added pre-generated examples to our website called um, webreports.nomagic.com so you can go and use this URL and then click on the sysml and you can get acquainted how the generated web portals will look like. Um, okay, so I think uh, that's it from the demo side on this part and let's get back to our slides. And there are a couple of other things I would like to show you on the web port portals which I mentioned that were introduced in 18.0 uh, version of our products. One capability that I haven't shown in the actual tool is the ability to comment. So basically it's possible to uh, enable the commenting functionality for web portals and here's how that looks like. You navigate to a specific place in your model, for example a use case, you select a use case and if your stakeholder or reviewer uh, wants to enter a comment, so there, there is a, a button here for entering a, a summary and a description. And then it's possible to integrate uh, web portals to your existing issue tracking systems like Jira or Track or whatever you are using. And the information entered in, in, in this screen is directly then regi registered uh, issues are created in your target integrated uh, system like Jira. In this particular case you can see the Jira example. Uh, we can see the summary uh, of the comment uh, becomes the subject, uh, the, the summary of the issue, then the text of the issue goes to the description and the description is automatically appended with the information to the original place which was com uh, commented. So basically, the, it's a very simple support, very basic support for commenting available in web portals. So now, now let's summarize uh, the technologies uh, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was showing so far. So here's a nice table for that. So on the left hand side, we can see the, uh, the various types of documents we have. Uh, approaches to generate documents and, and our, on our right hand side we can see the, uh, the, the, the various aspects. So 
So one of the uh, important things to note is that VTL templates for generating Word Excel documents are basically devoted for non-modelers and modelers. Web reports, since they generate the entire model information, are primarily devoted for modelers, those who understand models, and web portals uh, are devoted both for non-modelers and modelers. All the templates are VTL-based, and basically this is a template-based approach. Commenting is supported uh, both in VTL uh, templates and web portals, but they are not supported in web reports. And then customization can be done in VTL templates and web reports by the user, and in web portals only the magic can do the customization since it takes Java coding. Another two in the first two technologies, VTL scripting can be done and, 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 any, and users can do that. Okay, now let's uh, go to the SysML views and viewpoints approach for document generation. So we'll briefly discuss that. So basically system specifications are, are stored typically in models in MBSC. So and what's a viewpoint then? So basically a viewpoint specifies uh, rules how uh, the information in models should be presented in a suitable way for stakeholders. Uh, so we can see this element here. And what's the view then? So a view is uh, an element which connects your viewpoints with the model elements. So basically, uh, uh, this example very nicely shows what I mean. So let's imagine we have a viewpoint like a table. So we are saying that, well, any information in the model can be displayed, uh, can be represented as a table. And then we have a table or a set of elements in the model which are, for example, user needs or requirements. So then if we want to present that information available in the model as a table, so we create a view, in this case requirements, which says and, and specifies that, well, you have to display this part of the model, a generic table or a set of elements, as a table. So in, in this case, the product knows that a table needs to be generated out of this generic table. You can add more. So, for example, you can say that, well, before this is generating the requirements table, I want to add a free-form text. And you can place that text in any model element. For example, you can create a block, name it user needs, and in its you know, documentation you can put uh, any text you like. And then it's possible you can, you can say that, well, I need a paragraph viewpoint. Uh, and that paragraph viewpoint will represent information from the from this block documentation before displaying or rendering information uh, about user needs or requirements. Further, you can you know uh, set a title for the entire document. So again, you you choose an element in your model which from which you will take the title for your document, and then you. Uh, specify that well we'll render this as a title uh, so I'll now show you a very brief demo uh, of this of, of, of this approach so let's switch to magic draw and I will show you how the views and viewpoints model looks like so in this particular case we will again uh, this render a document containing this table, the requirements table, and in this particular case, as you as you can see, we have the same model that I showed you in the slides. So all we need to do is right click on the diagram and select the document preview right here, and the document preview is generated for us. So this approach supports uh, three formats: it's uh, saving information in HTML, PDF, and DocBook. So from DocBook, you can generate almost any type of document. There are very much, a lot of transformations available out there. In this particular case, we will save the document as a, as, a, as a PDF. Yes, and we will open it. And you can see a document is nicely generated for us. Yep, we have the requirements table. Uh, the, above the requirement table, we have the freeform text from the element taken. We also have the title of the document that we need. So the biggest advantage of this approach is that you don't have to code. 
in template-based approaches, as you, as, you, as you have seen, you have to use VTL to customize your templates. In this particular case, you all you need is to um, simply to, to all you need to do is to model to model the structure of your of your of um, of your of your document. So we are now working on this technology, new technology. It's a very innovative way to generate documents to, to specify templates. So you can you are free to to try it. And if you have any feedback for this new technology, so just let us know. Okay, and the last part from our presentation is the CML views and viewpoints approach for web content generation. So we are now working uh, for almost one year already on a new product called Camera Collaborator. So basically this product is devoted for those, especially non-modelers, uh, who need to uh, understand information available in the models on the web. They also need to review models on the web by commenting them and in the future, we are going also to support uh, limited or basic editing of models, most likely not via diagrams, but via web forms. And that's what we observe is a much more, uh, you know, convenient way and expected way to edit models for non-modelers. So as I mentioned, there are basically three use cases what we are trying to address here. So it's viewing and understanding content from models, reviewing and providing feedback, on content and approving content. And we are targeting non-modelers. So we will have uh, predefined, again, templates. And one of the templates will be devoted for systems engineers. There will also be a full model template available. Uh, you can customize the tab table, uh, that, that uh, template as you like. So if you look at the very high level architecture of this product, so we have magic drop on the left hand side and there is a plugin called Cameo Collaborator Publisher, which takes model and the views and viewpoints model we already saw to generate information available on Cameo Collaborator server. And Cameo Collaborator server is the Alfresco server with the extensions created by Nomagic. So what's Alfresco? So basically Alfresco is an open technology. Again, we are, we are relying on open, open technologies. It's a free product uh, licensed under LGPL, but a very scalable one, very extensible one, which we employ to store published models and information in there. So now we will show a brief demo of this new technology for you. So let's now uh, switch to the uh, to, to camera systems modeler and I will show you how to uh, the, the uh, model can be generated uh, in, into the website. So basically we have the same model and in, if we want to publish it onto Camera Collaborator, we have to go to Tools and we have to go to select the Publish to Camera Collaborator menu item and you have to enter here your credentials. So for, so for example, in this particular case, um, we uh, I will demonstrate the ability to comment models. So I will be uh, I will publish the model as an engineer, and my manager will react to the pub, to to, uh, to 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 what he thinks about the model uh, by creating some comments there. So in here, all you have to do is to enter your uh, username, password, um, server name. Uh, also, you have to select the scope what you want to publish, and you can also say, specify what the name of the uh, of the project will be on the server. So I, again, I will skip this step because I already have this model published on my server. So uh, now I will go to the browser and we'll connect to the Cameo Collaborator uh, website. So I'm now connecting to the server as an engineer. And I am now going to the shared folder Well, where I will see my published uh, model coffee machine here. I'm right-clicking right on it to open it in the new tab. So let's see how it looks like. So it's, it looks similar to uh, the web port portals we already saw. So the information here is available for you. You can see 
the tables, you can uh, add additional columns or remove columns, you can navigate uh, to the requirements. Uh, all of that is possible, but what's an additional, in addition is possible, the ability to comment. So now I, as an engineer, will give the link to this model to my manager so, so he can comment on this model. So I am now switching to another browser and I'll connect as a manager. And I'll do the review on this model. So let's say I, as a manager, uh, I'm reviewing this model and for example, in the physical model, uh, I have some comments. So what do I do? So there is a button here for entering graphical comments and it's a very effective way to do that. So for example, I think that this association is not needed. So I think I'm asking to, to remove it. I can also uh, draw additional shapes, add some text and say that, well, I think I, I, I think need some something here and I can do that the same for other diagrams too. So uh, I can go to the blocks, for example, and enter textual comments, not just graphical comments. So for this, I am clicking on the button here and I can say that, well, please change the name to padding, padding. Okay, so I can repeat this process for all, uh, for all the model or, or parts of the model. So now let's see what the engineer uh, can see from his perspective. So let's refresh the web portal. So on my right, right hand side, we can see the comments panel, which shows all comments from the entire model. So I can see that there are two new comments available. So one is the graphical comment for product tree. So I'm clicking on it and I can see that the manager has entered this comment and I can react to this comment by replying graphically and I say, well, okay, I agree. I will fix this soon. And we can go to the next uh, comment here and I'm asked now to change the name of this element uh, so I can review this comment here. So if I agree, I can go to the to, to, to camera systems model or a magic draw and I just right click here, copy link location and I can open my model. I can open the URL of that element and we can see that this pad element is, is here and I can change its name. I can close. I can again go to Tools and Publish Information Updated Model onto my website and then I can reply to, to Manager that but thanks, I have updated the model as requested. Now let's get, get back to the Manager's perspective. So let's refresh the website. And let's expand the, the comments panel and we can see that uh, what the engineer uh, responded. So he says that thanks, I have updated the model as requested. So if I see that there are changes in the model actually uh, on my website already published, I can select this, tick this checkbox to resolve the entire thread and the thread gets gray. So that means it's resolved. We can go here and see the graphical um, responses and if we again agree I can resolve this thread and everything is resolved. So that, that's a very uh, brief demonstration of the commenting capability. Uh, I will also briefly um, discuss uh, a couple of other aspects what's possible to do with this new product. So one of the uh, things you do uh, is when you have for example like uh, a team of uh, reviewers you want to be able to track uh, the review process more uh, precisely. 
So for that, I as an engineer, for example, can start workflows. So for that, I can start a workflow and select one of the possible workflows for me. For example, in this particular case, I will choose the send documents for review and I can initiate the review process. And I can say that, please review my work. I can also specify the, here the goal, uh, my goal, for example, for the reviewers. I can specify the due date, the priority of this. I can select reviewers, like in this case, it's man manager. Uh, it can also be, for example, subject matter expert. Uh, I can add items. In this particular case, we have published uh, models, like coffee machine, and I can start my workflow. I can go to the uh, workflows I have started, and we can see easily uh, the status. So we can see the status of this workflow here. We can see that the manager and expert hasn't yet started the review. When they will start, I will see the status here. I can also open up the process diagram where I can see the entire review process and I can see easily in which step of this process uh, we are. And if I, for example, need uh, a custom review process in my organization, so it's possible to model uh, the process using BPMN and deploy it onto Kame Collaborator and the review process will, will be very specific to your organization. Uh, one more interesting uh, concept we have is uh, the support for sites. So once we have, for example, a team of which wants to collaborate on a specific design, for example, like an engine design, so we can create a, a site here. In this particular case, I'm choosing the engine design site. And we can see members of the site. So in this particular case, we have three members. We can invite members from uh, the our Active Directory or LDAP. Uh, we can also invite external people, uh, like stakeholders, into this group of people. And we can have a closed repository of documents right here. So for this specific site. So this document rep repository contains models, uh, PowerPoint, Word documents, and other documents, and we can collaborate on them. What's interesting here is the support for wikis. So if you open up the wiki here, you can put the unstructured information into the wiki. You can add additional pages, edit pages as you like. So basically, uh, you can edit information here, edit information from your Word documents, and what's Im more important is that you can add links to your published models. You can click on here and, for example, add a link here. And you can save. And then, actually, you can give to other people or your colleagues or other stakeholders not the links, direct links to your models, but links to your wiki pages here. So you, 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 they enter browsing your uh, information you're trying to present from from wikis and they when browsing for that information they dive in deeper and they encounter models uh, yes so so that's I think it about the new technology we are developing uh, maybe one more important aspect is that this technology allows to use viewpoints and uh, views and viewpoints to customize uh, the information available in the portal so you can model what trees do you have here? What elements are available in each tree? Uh, what happens when you click on each element here? So you will, how many properties do you see here? Uh, what are other related data displayed here? So basically this technology is the one we are now heavily working on and it will be available in a couple of months. So I think that's it for now. So let's, let's read the questions now. Thank you, Andrews, for interesting presentation. Now we are switching to the questions and answer session. And let's see, do we have one? Um, I guess, yes. 